Hey, this is Katie with Following the Funks, and today we are in the city of Koch, Greece. Uh, we're getting off the boat. Over. We're in Greece. Here. So if you are just now tuning in, we are an American expat family living in Izmir, Turkey. My husband, Jason, our daughter, Sophia, and I are actually spending the month of August in the peninsula of Bodrum, Turkey. And just off of Bodrum City is a little Greek island, I should say it's not so little, of Kosh. Um, it is part of the Do... I'm going to say the wrong... Dodecanus islands um, which are all just off of the coast of Turkey. Most are and this island is within the five largest of these islands. There's lots of them just kind of like sprinkled throughout. But just recently I did a video about Kios, Greece, but this is my first time to ever come to Kosh, uh, Greece, off, which is off the coast of Bodrum City. You take a 20 minute catamaran ferry from Bodrum to the Kosh port and yeah, you're in another country. We're increased. We're here. Made it to the Greek island of Kos. Kos. We waited quite a while in the passport line. There's two. There's two passport controls. Oops, sorry. So many people. I don't understand. Um, then we got some delicious breakfast of some eggs and bacon. And then we have kind of meandered through Old Town. I mean, you could spend your whole day just meandering around and wondering, guessing, as we like to say, in our little Turkish way um, around the old city of Kosh. And then now we are finally getting to some of the older kind of ruins, I would say, of this area. So yeah, I thought I would catch you up and then keep you coming along. Where are your shoes? Oh, lovely. Gorgeous. We just visited the Casa Romana, which is the old Roman villa. And there was an earthquake in 1933 that actually damaged most of this building. Um, and so it laid in remains for quite a while actually damaged quite a few of the traditional buildings here on this island but it also uncovered quite a few ruins that maybe weren't known about before and so what is interesting about this old Roman villa is that they have taken what was remained or what was found underneath the mosaics they and they have partially renovated it and reconstructed it to show you what an old Roman villa would have looked like back in the day. So the, the rooms um, each have uh, different artifacts or different things that they have found. They tell you about the life of what would have ha um, happened during the villas, so slavery or uh, women's life, uh, the men's life, um, a part of what the kitchen would have looked like. And so it's, a, it's an interesting 
site to come and see for six euros. Uh, you can get in and explore in the shade, which is nice on a hot day in August, to see what old Roman villa and life would have looked like. You can see what it maybe looked like before, what was uncovered here. They have reconstructed basically everything up the original while restructuring a building on top of it to show you what it possibly looks like. It is very close to the Old Town area. It's easy walking distance. We've walked all the way from uh, the port um, through Old Town Square as we were shopping into this site and now we're going on to a, another little ancient ruined site, a little Roman amphitheater. Let's head on that way. Not even a five minute walk from the Casa Romana or Romano is the uh, Odium. So this is the Roman Odium, which is like a theater as we would call it in Turkey, or that's what I would call it. Um, I think it used to be a council seat for meetings or any type of production, plays, theater, that kind of thing. Obviously it's pretty small. It could have been larger at one point in time, but it was built in I think the third century BC. But there was a big earthquake that uh, caused some damage in like the first century AD, it was restored and then of course like eventually was damaged and ruined again. But it was actually restored during the Italian occupation in the 30s and 40s and then of course which is this is something that I didn't realize that it was under Italian um, occupation until it was under German occupation during the world wars and then of course the British occupied reclaimed it and then it became part of the islands the Greek islands just at the end of the 1940s so this is the theater it's not much to it free to get in and now we head over to the opposite side to the western um, archaeological site let's go if you're watching this and you're not familiar with this sound it is so loud so we call these bugs cicadas they're singing right now in the masses and it is so loud but it also kind of reminds me of home just thought you might want to enjoy it if you've never heard them before <gasps> Here are some old houses, maybe shops, the old road, maybe some market area. Wow. And houses! We just walked through the western archaeological site, which is across from the Roman Odium or theater. Yeah, it's all open. It's free to visit. You can pass through to get back into the western side of Old Town. There's an old basilica or church. There's a baptistry. Uh, there's quite a few mosaics that have never been uncovered, but they are slightly showing through. Um, it's kind of like a playground out here. <laughs> and there is one mosaic that is really nicely covered that's over this way. I'm sure that a lot of things have made it to the museum, which we won't be making it to today, um, but you should check out the museum. I'll try to put the name of it right here. The only thing that was really disappointing about it is that there was just no signs for anything and so I really didn't know what I was looking at except we've been to a bazillion type of ruins before and so I was like oh that's the living quarters and oh that's a baptistry and oh I think that's a church. So um, coming from an expert ruin goer -er, uh, that is what that area looks like. So off to eat a late lunch in Old Town again. We went to the Ambrosia restaurant, <laughs> laughing at me, Mia, <laughs> in the Diaga Square. Oh gosh, I'm getting all these names wrong. Definitely enjoyed our lunch. We had a, a few euros and we split some appetizers and a salad. And then we strolled 
back through Old Town. got ourselves some gelato and we're headed back to the boat it is after five now and our boat leaves at six but we hear the passport lines pretty long and we are walking through the crowd of people coming off of the day tours and the day boats and people headed back to the ferry boat to go back to Turkey. So I don't feel like we're alone in our situation. <laughs> there are a few things that we did miss. The hidden Agora uh, just east of Old Town, the museums um, and the castle and then I think a really famous tree. But I'll try to include those in a blog post that I write alongside this. So I would love to know if you have been to Kos, if you have traveled to a Greek island off of the coast of Turkey, what did you think? What was your favorite? What did we miss and what should we have done? As always, I hope you have a great week and I will see you next time. Bye.